Fred here. Welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, I am going to bring it on down to the kitchen. I know that a lot of gun-related channels do something in the kitchen, but I can't cook for a damn. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to show you how to make the world's best coffee. Now before we get started, I got a package in the mail. I want to open it because it came from somebody pretty special. And that person is Mad Bad Voodoo. He's done a lot to help my channel. And I, I can never say enough to show my appreciation to him for everything he's, he's done for me. And he sent me something. Oh, I'll tell you what. Hold on a minute. All right, here it is. Awesome, awesome. Fits good, feels good, love it, love it. Thank you, thank you. So let's get to making the world's best cup of coffee. The first thing we want to do, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring you all in closer, is show you a couple things here. You want to start with some really good coffee and one of the coffees that I really enjoy um, ever since I was uh, a teenager is 8 o'clock coffee and they make it in decaf and regular and you want to get the f full beans you don't want to get anything ground up yet you want to get the beans now another coffee I found that was pretty good is Dunkin Donuts <laughs> Dunkin Donuts has their own house coffee and again, whole beans. Only get whole beans. Next thing you want is because you're getting whole beans, you need a grinder. Now this grinder is made by Bodum. They make some pretty good stuff. I highly recommend them. I've had this for years. The thing is like a rock. It weighs a ton. Made out of stainless steel. I'm not sure if it's for 20 or what? <laughs> Who cares? It's it's a grinder. Um, and then the last thing you want, sorry for my reach, is this. This is a French press. Now this particular one is made by Bodum also. I got this at Starbucks, which I hate. I don't drink their coffee, but they do have some cool stuff in their store. And they had this cool French press doesn't look like your classic one. It looks a little different and I kind of like the way it looks. So I went ahead and got this one. I think this was around $15 I believe. Now I also have a coffee maker here. What I, um, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to boil water on the stove. So I'm going to use the hot water out of my um, K-Cup uh, Keurig coffee maker. Which is pretty good, you know. If you if you need a single serve kind of coffee maker, this is probably your best choice. Another thing that really completes the whole coffee drinking experience is a good thick porcelain cup. Now this one happened to be a gift from Henry, repeating firearms from the president. He had given me this really cool cup, and I I drink from it every day. Now for a cup this size. You want to use like a, a little scoop like this, probably about two to three scoops of beans. But again, this is very personal. This is really uh, something per your taste. You know, th three scoops would be pretty strong, two would be sort of medium. So I'm going to go ahead and put about two and a half. For, you know, I don't feel like something too strong today. I'm going to put about two and a half scoops into my grinder right here. Get the top and grind. Now, I don't want this to be ground too fine, and the reason why is because on the French press you have this um, screen and if you do it too fine your coffee's going to go through that screen. 
So you, you want it about the consistency of coarse sand. Okay, and then what you're going to do is put it into your French press. You unplug this from the wall. Since only I'm drinking it, I'm going to stick my finger in here. But if you have family over, don't do this. Use, use a spoon or something. And also make sure you, you have your grinder unplugged. Just to be on the safe side. Now, the next thing you want to do, I'll show you the grounds there, grinds there. The next thing you want to do is you want to add water. Now that water has to be a certain temperature for this coffee to be right. It's very highly debated. Some people will stay 180, 185, 190. 200, even as high as 205. By the way, 212 degrees Fahrenheit is boiling. And you don't want it boiling. Um, you want to add water that is somewhere between 180 to 200 degrees. Again, it depends on your taste. And I, I sort of feel that the higher the temperature, the quicker the grounds are going to release their flavor. But if you go too far, <laughs> or if you try to push too much water through grounds, it gets bitter. So you don't want to make it too hot and you don't want to use more coffee than what the grinds can handle. So anyway, um, this is about the right amount of coffee for this cup. So, I'm going to go ahead and the monkey hits the button. You remember what that was from? What movie that was from? I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple of seconds to think about it. It was in the Lost in Space movie when the Jupiter 2 blasted off. Okay, what I just grabbed here is a thermometer. It's the kind that you sort of uh, can point and shoot. And uh, it's not really the ideal temperature there. So it's going to end up tasting a little weak, but since a little less water went in there than I anticipated, it should work out all right. Now, the next thing you want to do is sort of mix it up a little bit. Help, help those <laughs> coffee grounds release their flavor, sort of give it a spin. Really, if you have glass like this, you probably want to use like a wooden stick, not a spoon. If you do use a spoon, be very careful not to crack the glass. Now, you want to let it sit for four minutes. Sit for four, four minutes, four minutes. Okay, it's been four minutes. Now we're going to put the word press into French press. So, you get your French press there, and we um, put that in there. And you want to press down on this plunger until you hit bottom, but you don't want to do it fast. You want to go nice and slow. Nice and slow. You don't, you don't want to end up inadvertently forcing some of the fine pieces of coffee through that screen. So if you do it slow, you should be pretty good. Okay, and we're on the bottom. And now we are ready to pour. Okay, on this one, you sort of can uh, 
turn the cover till you get to where the vents are for the coffee to come through. And you pour. Oh my god, you can't get this in a restaurant. Smell this. Smell that. Oh man, that's good. Oh, this is like the best coffee ever. Uh, yeah, you all have no idea until you get a French press how good a cup of coffee can be. <laughs> now the reason why I got this particular um, French press is because besides it looking cooler than the other ones is this whole handle portion which is plastic you could take out the glass and just clean the, the, the glass portion. And of course you want to clean all this too. Look at all that coffee, all those coffee grounds in there. Now, you don't have to throw it away. It's actually pretty good to put down your drain. So Some other coffees that I really enjoy um, are Kona, and not the Kona blend, the pure 100% Kona, and of course Colombian. Um, they, those, those are my favorites. So the 8 o'clocks, um, Caribou House Blend is really good too, uh, and of course, the, like I said, the Kona and the Colombian. So that's really it. That's how I make the world's best cup of coffee right here the gear obsession kitchen thank you very much friends subscribers viewers you are greatly appreciated please come back again